This episode is sponsored by Storyblocks. Welcome to Tutorial Thursdays. All right, guys, very excited to jump into this. As you can tell by my voice, I am very sick. I uh, have a bit of a fever coming down from it. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to get this video in for you guys because I know that this uh, this particular effect was going to be requested. And there's a few things that went into it that I think are super valuable. So hopefully you won't mind me sounding this dead and uh, we'll, we'll plow through some good info. So let's jump right into it. So this is a scene from the latest video that I just posted. So if you're watching this video as soon as it's uploaded, it will actually be uh, posted tomorrow. I end up being in this alien planet and there's this... Uh, this dust storm forming in the background. And what makes this effect effective is the, also the use of coverage. And we'll, we'll show a little bit of some reaction shots in my timeline in Premiere later on in the video if you guys are interested in sticking around for that. But uh, yeah, that's, that's really gonna help you guys if you're trying to make this type of effect. So I'll show you an example of also how I edited and did the sound design. For now, let's just focus on the effect because that's what you guys are here for. So let's just uh, break this down bit by bit. You can see that there's a lot of elements at play. So uh, it didn't make sense to do a, a full on step by step tutorial, but more of an overview because some of the, some of the basic steps in this are uh, very simple. It just becomes a matter of, of repeating them for a bunch of layers. So this looks a little bit complex, but it's only because there is a ton of stuff um, just stacked on top of each other to get sort of uh, that detail and that realism. But really, it's just using multiple assets and doing the same steps for all of them. All right, so we have our footage. This is what I first started with. So we can see that I added some lumetri color. This was shot in log, so I made some, some basic corrections just to get the colors out of my shot. Now, the more that you can do this, the better. And this is important because we're going to be keying out the sky later on to uh, save us some time with some rotoscoping in this area. So that's that's exactly what my next step was. So I'm going to I'm just going to isolate layers by layers so you can see exactly what I was doing. I made a duplicate copy of this footage so I can just uh, so that as well. And all this top layer has is just a basic linear color key where I keyed out the sky. You can see here, maybe if I go to uh, matte only, you kind of see what that's doing. So it's essentially allowing us to not worry about the t-shirt, the hat, you know, some of the face so much so that then we can just refine things with a mask instead of doing the full body, which sometimes it can look a little weird. So if you have little things like this that can help you and that can maintain those true edges in there, that's always better than rotoscoping. So that's what I did here. And essentially it's just, again, a duplicate copy with that effect slapped on top of it. Uh, I just fine tuned these two these two parameters here until it matched what my specific scene was like. And then I had another copy of the footage without the key. And essentially I just set it to look at the alpha mat of that, uh, that copy with the linear color key. And this just avoids any artifacts, anything that the key might generate. So you can see that I've also applied some masks. And that's because as the storm was progressing towards camera, I wanted to have part of the, part of the horizon actually disappear. It was just to also highlight the distance of how fast this thing was approaching. Now, you can see here that there's two moments in time, and I knew that for this gap here, I actually had a bunch of coverage. So what I did is I marked it. So my, my, my two main points were just uh, this part right here at the end with the hat flying off where we see the storm. And then there's another part here where it's uh, where I put my arm down and I start to turn around. I knew that I didn't have to worry about this whole part here because I had coverage where I was cutting to close-ups of me actually looking at the storm. So that's also really helpful if you know ahead of time what kind of shots and what sequence you're going to be doing. You can only focus on a few good moments out of that take and, and really detail those moments out. And also worth noting, the reason why I didn't split these up into two different comps is because a lot of times I'll reuse some of those same assets uh, and it's just nicer for me to move it over. It does get a little cluttery, but that's my personal choice for, for why I did it this way. 
Now, the next step is this layer right here. So it's another copy once again. And this is where I added all of these masks that you see to refine, especially the, the highlight part of my, my arm was getting keyed out, the part of my neck and face here. So this was just a way to bring that information back in. And I just have this separated just because I like to see it that way. And it also shows the steps a little bit more clearly so that you can see the progression. But that's essentially the main steps that you need to worry about. And then everything else becomes almost sort of like plug and play. Well, actually, I lied. There is one additional step that you need to make sure before you can get to the fun side of it, which is adding all the assets in here, and that is motion tracking. So you can see that this null object, if I hit U on my keyboard, it has all the keyframes that are uh, the movement, essentially the camera movement of this scene. Now, I've done a bunch of motion tracking tutorials. I'm not going to bore you with all the details. Make sure that you watch those. Um, you know, this is more of an overview. With that information being in that null object, everything that needs to move in my scene is also parented to that null object so that we maintain that movement with all the assets that we're bringing in. From there, we can add all of the assets that you saw. So let me just unsolo everything so we can take a look at all the assets I added and we can talk a little bit about that. So here we go. That's the last part so you can see me like turning and then the hat uh, flew off this is a happy accident something hitting the camera like that really adds to the danger of kind of all of this and the debris so it worked out worked out nicely there's a lot going on because if we just added the storm let me just solo this that's what this asset looks like. So this is actually from Production Create, and I've mentioned them a few times on my channel. That's where I actually got all of the assets. So I know I get a ton of questions for that, so you can find all of that in, uh, in pretty much this category is, is what I use for the foreground elements. And then I had the, uh, the large scale uh, dust for these main elements right here. So really love their stuff. Uh, but yeah, this is what it looks like with everything together. And every other layer is essentially to either make this have more contact with the ground, uh, to have more debris across the screen, or to even have uh, some of these elements here, like these bushes, and have uh, like some of the leaves flying off. So the more detailed you are with this, the, the, the better of an effect it will be. And of course, this we were pretty much limited with time on this. We only had a week to do it. So it was super handy to have uh, great assets like this that can, uh, that can make it a lot easier. Now, as I'm uh, soloing and unsoloing these things, you can see a kind of a reoccurring thing that I do in the effects. So here you can see that I've added a mask just to make sure that it's coming from the sides. And I also add some tint effects, which is a very easy way to color correct elements, something especially as simple as uh, dust waves or that sort of thing. It's really easy to just throw on a tint effect, pick some colors from your actual scene, uh, such as the actual dust that's there, and tint it to that color and that is a, a nice quick and dirty way to get stuff to match very easily into your scene. So that's what I ended up doing for pretty much all of these assets. Some of these are a little different, like these uh, leaves elements. You can see that they have a more greenish and brown uh, type of tint, and that's because I wanted to pick colors from the, the type of plants that were in the scene. So it looks like it could be stuff coming from uh, from these plants. That's pretty much it. You just end up stacking a bunch of those together, uh, you know, like have a lot of foreground stuff uh, the more that it approaches. Now, the main thing that makes the, the humor and the tension sort of in this first shot is the fact that the audience, so us, sees the dust storm before the character in the scene does. And again, this is done in a very basic way, but you can see the effect of revealing things to camera first before your characters in your scene do. Then it cuts to a shot of me actually slowly turning around because we hear the rumble and sort of the vibration from the sound design. And then finally we have uh, the, the wide shot with the hat flying off, then the coverage of me without the hat running off and then grabbing the hat. So that is essentially the, the main coverage that we planned ahead of time. And that actually made this effect a lot more realistic because there's a lot more moving parts into it and, and it just keeps it more engaging. Now, as far as the sound design, uh, there's not a lot of really complicated stuff going on. It's just basic effects of low rumbles and atmosphere, as well as a few debris hits when the storm passes onto the camera. And all the sounds that you guys are hearing are from Storyblocks, which is today's sponsor. It was so crucial to use their audio library for for all the sound effects because honestly getting that soundscape right and getting all those individual sounds for the for the dust storm to really play well together required me to have access to a huge library instead of just buying individual sounds so i could literally look for debris 
and find a bunch of different sound effects that fit some some rock debris for example for the sandstorm maybe even a low rumble and i can literally type this in so you can see we have a bunch of rumble uh, sound effects and guys this makes sound design so much easier and just more enjoyable because you get to just really experiment with different sounds throw them in without worrying about you know spending money on the individual sound effects and i'm using this in a youtube video but of course you guys can use these sound effects for commercial projects non-commercial projects so i really think it's super valuable so get yourself a membership and get access to unlimited downloads of sound effects music and audio loops all right guys i really hope you enjoyed this video and it was useful to see a little bit of this process it was a lot of fun doing this type of visual effect and you guys will get to see it in tomorrow's video if you're watching as soon as it's posted don't miss it out because we talk about networking for filmmakers which guys networking and collaboration is probably the most important thing for you guys to get on more projects get more work and tell better stories so tune into that and subscribe if this is your first time for more tutorials and filmmaking videos my name is chris trini and i'll see you in the next one i'm gonna get some sleep and hopefully i'll feel better soon